When you're reviewing seven movies in a short space of time, you're going to miss out on common factors, things that all the films have in common to avoid being redundant. This video is to comment on such trends and discuss other things the Saw series does well, or not as the case may be. Let's start with the music. Now I've used bits of music in my reviews and whereas the trap music may not be memorable, the main theme, Hello Zep, is. There are several mixes throughout all seven movies, but each movie's twist is revealed to the same or similar backdrop. It's also how I finished each of my reviews with those opening lines that are iconic to the franchise. The music during the traps add atmosphere where needed, the use of silence during the breathing trap in Saw 6, or the way the music in the Venus flytrap in Saw 2 gets faster and louder as Michael becomes more desperate before succumbing to its purpose. Unfortunately, these are the only times that I can think of or that remain memorable. There's lots of music used, but nothing else really stands out as the action on screen takes precedent. Maybe that's the point, but it's a legitimate criticism. Sound effects, on the other hand, are incredibly intense. Whereas visually, things like cutting a foot off or bone splintering can be effective, they also hit so much harder with realistic sounding effects. At no point during the series do I think that the sound effect is not fitting the scene or not being out of place. Mechanical clunking or the whirring of saws have been repurposed to make you fear and anticipate normally innocuous sounds. This goes hand in hand with visuals which only once or twice don't look realistic, namely Amanda pulling needles out of her arm in Saw 2 or Dr. Gordon cauterizing his leg on a hot pipe in Saw 7. Otherwise though, everything looks like it's actually happening to the actors. When Troy in Saw 3 is pulling the chains out of his skin, it looks like he's really suffering and you recoil, especially when he pulls out his Achilles chains. Now I mentioned Jill's purple blood in Saw 7 and that film perhaps has the most cartoon-like deaths such as arms and jaw being pulled off by a car, but it's still a visceral effect, especially Jill's jaws being blown open by the head trap. In earlier entries, the camera work highlighted the struggle the victims had with the use of cutaways how they're feeling inside or sped up footage to show panic. This is toned down in later entries, instead opting for close-ups of the damage or impact depending on the trap. Saw 7 is the only one guilty of pandering to the audience, as some shots, including throwing of the saw or Suzanne's trap, emphasize the 3D. I preferred the spinning or sped up view when in a time limit situation, but at no point did its removal detract from the films. Despite having seven entries, the original Saw series films are only about 90 minutes long each. This means that none of them, except for Saw 4, overstay their welcome. In each review, I mentioned whether a film didn't do enough or tried to do too much, but as an average, each one balances out to tell a long story over a timescale of several years. Time is a vital plot point. You really have to pay attention to know what's going on. Most of the twists, especially in later films, rely on events in previous entries and your prior knowledge of characters and motivation. It can mean that newcomers may be put off, but you know the story wouldn't work if it was shown chronologically. If I were a smarter man with more time on my hands, I'd try and write a chronological timeline, but for now, I'll accept what's given to me. I do wonder though if the Saw series was always meant to go on as long as it did. After Saw 2, every other film set something up for future films to pick up on. It's difficult to say whether just one film was meant to tie it up or whether seven films were intended from the start. This would explain why no sequel bait was left in the first two films, but perhaps they weren't expecting so many sequels back then. Something I do like is the lack of big name Hollywood actors stealing focus from everyone. Danny Glover and Donnie Wahlberg are the only well known actors, and they're used well as Detective Tapp and Eric Matthews respectively. As much as I dislike Eric's character, he's portrayed well by Wahlberg throughout. This franchise though shines a big spotlight on Tobin Bell. He portrays a happy family man, someone who wants to make a difference and is transformed through realistic looking grief to an angry bitter man before accepting his role as Jigsaw. Bell's gravelly voice chills you and although it's disguised through filters, 
Billy the Puppet just doesn't sound the same when Hoffman is running the show. Tobin Bell also portrays his cancer weakening him in Saw 3, but still has enough in him to shout when necessary or smile when he sees Jeff about to kill him. Bell knows that less is more, he genuinely looks like the character he's playing. Without this performance, Jigsaw's story just wouldn't be as fascinating. And so I go into the 8th movie Jigsaw, excited but at the same time apprehensive. It's been 7 years since Saw 7 and I'm hoping that this new film is more like Rocky Balboa than Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. For now though, thank you very much for watching.